set of uh, speakers. Uh, they're going to give you a little bit of insight into some of that useful information on Twitter and how you might be able to access it. So these are both first-time speakers here at ShmooCon and really any major conference. So let's give a warm round of applause for Hex Waxwing and Daniel Gallagher. All right, well, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll get started here. Um, so uh, my name's Daniel Gallagher. Uh, most people don't really uh, know me. Uh, they know me on Twitter as Grumpy Cat, but um, my background is in MedSec. I recently came out of MedSec uh, to work alongside um, uh, Wax uh, with a, a company. We develop um, information security training environments uh, for this a company that was founded by rogue AI uh, researchers. Uh, that are interested in breaking down those uh, traditional educational paradigms. Um, uh, in MedSec, I uh, uh, led the blue team, uh, instant response, and um, uh, SOC operations. So in doing so, I turned into a, naturally a Splunk fanboy. I uh, love uh, analyzing logs and data. And then my community uh, outreach, and what most people know me by, is, is, uh, is malware hunting, uh, working together with the uh, specifically with a, with a small team of really amazing researchers hunting uh, ransomware and billion decryptors. Um, and uh, yeah, a little bit me. Yeah, so um, I'm Wax, can you guys hear me? Okay. I'm, I'm Waxwing. Um, I was first introduced to InfoSec almost exactly a year ago to this day, so happy hacker birthday to me. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't figure out what exactly all the different areas of InfoSec were, nor how they were interrelated, and I couldn't find any previous work on some kind of viable taxonomy. So um, my, my academic background is in anthropology and neuroscience, so I relied on that skill set to help me orient myself when I had very little outside guidance in InfoSec. So um, on my own, I started to enumerate all the different domains using the community structures evident on um, uh, Hacker InfoSec Twitter uh, to try to suss out uh, the internal organization of the community, and this talk is about how that little project uh, kept snowballing. So. What the heck is this project? Um, it's, it's about uh, 101 currently uh, different uh, InfoSec themed Twitter lists as of around last night. Um, each leet list is uh, comprised of somewhere between 15 and 200 Twitter accounts. Some are up to around closer to like 500 different accounts in the list. And uh, altogether, there are somewhere between 5,000 and 10,000 accounts that, that are in at least one of the leet lists. Um, many are in multiple lists. So um, they were collected according to social hierarchy, as indicated by characteristics of interactions, because clearly I can't be an expert in all of the different domains, but you can tell who defers to whom um, and build it out that way. And altogether, it outlines the boundaries of the Twitter-based English-speaking hackersphere uh, in very broad strokes. I, I did not try to go into other languages. Um, not yet. And I named it Leet List because I thought it would annoy everybody. <laughs> and they actually remember it, yeah. so uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And, and like alliteration that. is always nice. So. <laughs> um, it, really important disclaimers: the current lists are incomplete and require community vetting and feedback before we can, with any sort of confidence, say that it is an accurate representation of the community. I am exquisitely aware of all the different holes um, in, in the map right now. Uh, it's currently completely skewed towards accounts that are largely posting on-topic relevant tweets, aka those accounts that have a naturally um, high signal-to-noise ratio, um, which is necessary until we have the, the shit posting and off-topic filters properly built out. Well, no, 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 no. Coming, you, yeah. you, it works both <laughs> ways. <laughs> So um, the ultimate objective is to include everybody within the community, but to have all the content be reliably auto-categorized on the back end so users can tune their feed's content according to like individual preferences and people can like share popular configs for different use cases with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so where I come in um, is with my background. I started talking to, to Wax about, um, about a project and kind of remarked on the, the level of alerts and data uh, that she was working with. 
and 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 thought it was is was just ridiculous. Yeah, the spreadsheets um, weren't cutting it. Yeah, yeah, spreadsheets for all this. No, um, so uh, I said, you know, let's let's throw that data in the Splunk. Let's let's see what we got. Take a look and, and see if there's anything interesting. So this is kind of just a a, a quick little dashboard I have in there to be able to monitor uh, some of the accounts, the current ones that we're looking at right now. Um, it's about 1,200. Uh, will eventually be about 10,000 um, different uh, accounts in information security, uh, which averages about. Uh, 70 to 100 tweets per minute. Um, it's all original content from those uh, uh, members and then any interaction from the public with that data set, uh, all of it is brought into Splunk uh, in JSON format and then we can do whatever, whatever we want with it. So with that data, as we started looking at it, um, uh, I wanted something different and wanted to visualize it. So I'm not a data viz guy, um, but I started playing around with this really awesome tool called Graphistry. Um, and I apologize if I butcher data viz or, or any type of data analysis because I just click on things and, until it looks pretty and, and then yeah, I talk we, about we, it. We have no idea what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, no idea. <laughs> um, so like in something like here, uh, we originally found out when we started throwing the data uh, in there and visualizing it that uh, like these patterns uh, start to emerge here. Nerd Pile is like a great example of like Threadzilla shit posting. Uh, these real high, <laughs> we all know. Um, it's you know, so, so beautiful and symmetric. But it's beautiful. Though. Um, like it's way, know. way more beautiful than the like on yeah. topic one. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, you can see, uh, you know, these higher interaction, back and forth uh, uh, interactions between different members, like a weird artifact of like bringing apparently Swift uh, into this uh, Threadzilla happened by these people here uh, are the, are to blame. Yeah, it's uh, like a and union then a, of the shit posters. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then uh, you see a little different type of interaction here where you have singular uh, interactions with the account. This is over seven days, by the way, uh, of just replies. Um, and, and those people in that bottom, uh, the bottom section here don't interact with the group as a whole. If they did, they'd be up on, in this area here, uh, you know, getting pulled into there. Yeah, so it's jellyfishing. Jellyfishing, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is another one. Um, arguably, I probably just put this in here because I, I kind of like it. It looks like they're high-fiving up here, and that made me happy. But what this is here is each node is, um, uh, is a specific uh, list at this point. So, and, and, and the connections between the two are these are what uh, the people that the list themselves, all the people in them, are following uh, in common. Uh, so this stands out as between these two um, lists, there's this little cluster of, of uh, followings you know, uh, between those two. And that starts to spur questions, well, why? You know, uh, why is it that those two groups in particular and none of the others just follow that subset of people? Yeah, and, and we can start to kind of chart out how different, like, information can flow from one part of the community to yeah, and, another and, by looking at those connections yeah, between because those tend to be the people that will bridge community or uh, conversation gaps in between those. Um, Diving a bit deeper, now this is a, a very specific list, and uh, this actually happens to be like uh, all the information security journalists. Um, so we took each node is going to be what they, you know, who they follow, uh, with the distinction of in this one here, um, I removed anybody we already knew uh, that was classified on the list. We're just looking at everybody um, that we have, we, we don't have classified yet. That's just you know, and uh, you know that we've never seen before. We're trying um, to find the holes. Yeah, exactly, or, or other members, or you know, someone else who should be included and, and try to you know, answer some questions. So you, you get little little blobs here where node size is actually uh, generated on um, uh, the degree in or how many people follow each of those people. Uh, so you can see when uh, you can start getting bigger nodes here, there's uh, like a set, that one was like seven of those journalists, all exactly the same ones follow that little cluster of people. Well, now why? You know, did they post something? Did they post something important? You know, is there, are they a good source of information? Um, uh, it, it helps to be able to, to start uh, where we, we ask questions. Um, this one here uh, really doesn't serve much of a purpose besides the fact that um, this is actually really cool because it's like our first hacker fam uh, family photo. Um, so I, uh, you know, with the limited data set here, you know, about, uh, whoops, uh, we'll go back here. Um, uh, uh, about uh, 1,243 different uh, unique accounts, but with almost 92,000 friendship uh, paths going between everybody. Yeah, it clusters into this really cool it's little. It's really just complicated. Like, yes, complicated. Yeah, we have no idea. Um, so uh, I just thought it was neat to be able to throw it in there because it, it shows it, it literally shows a community um, in there. So 
and and how densely packed it is. Yeah, but, exactly. A nice core community. So. But like cool picks, bro. <laughs> but um, what can you actually do with it? Yeah. Um, one of the things that became evident as the project grew was that we could like leverage this data set to solve a number of other problems. So I, I've identified around 15 open problems um, that this project could be used to help solve. But we'll just go through some of the more popular ones here. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. So the fire hose of information that is InfoSec Twitter is a potential gold mine for students and practitioners of InfoSec alike, but there's no practical way to navigate that, that volume of information manually. Like cat memes and shit posts are annoying when you're trying to just look at technical info. Yeah. Um, and Threadzillas are almost impossible to navigate unless you're actively monitoring their development in real time, which who, who has time for that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we've actually um, already done the groundwork for defining the community and classifying most of the domains and categories within that community. And I, I have hundreds of notes on patterns of activity or content that, that could be automatically detected by running analytics on that data set. So we, we should probably just automate all the stupid stuff so we could focus on the fun stuff more. Um, and with all of this, really importantly, uh, we do not have to rely on people changing their online habits in order to actively contribute to tapping this wealth of institutional knowledge. We're, we're basically taking signals from the existing data set, using the metadata to, to grab mm -hmm. additional information. Exactly. Just we work teach, off what everybody else is already doing. Yeah, teach computers how mm -hmm. to interpret it in the same way that an anthropologist mm -hmm. can. Okay. Um, and uh, so we've got a number of different open yeah, problems. Yeah, so this is the so, second, yeah. yeah. Education in InfoSec is a dumpster fire. There's a huge disconnect between book, book learning and practical skills. Like, it doesn't really matter what you know, it matters what you can do. Um, it's hard to tell from the outside what, what the hell actual professionals in InfoSec actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, we, we already know that like immersive learning environments are a critical component to learning any new discipline, but especially InfoSec, which is like driving a car 70 miles an hour and trying to pick people up without stopping. Yeah. It's difficult because um, our field moves so fast. It's very dynamic, yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, the proposed solution would be this project. Um, we, we've already classified different InfoSec domains to allow newbies to get oriented with the community. They can just use the feeds to have an immersive experience, mm -hmm. and, and that'll make it not easy, but easier to get up to and stay up to speed um, using an already well-established immersive environment. Um, and it's not just useful for newbies, it's, it's also going to increase visibility um, with each other so that the different domains of InfoSec can better um, communicate and we can coordinate ourselves um, better as a cohesive community, like, for example, doing PR campaigns to help educate the public about mm -hmm. actual yeah. security practices. Um, and another one is interesting things happen on Twitter all day, but unless you're having your attention between your actual work and Twitter, you end up missing a lot or being terrible at your job. <laughs> um, so why don't we digest, uh, generate digests of interesting threads and resources that would, um, like, you should be able to just generate a proper digest of all the relevant tweets for a specific time period and, and you should be able to use, you know, different configs for different use cases for whatever type of digest you want mm -hmm. to get. Like, we should be able to do that. Why aren't we? Yeah, this, this uh, comes up a lot even when I, I found myself using uh, Twitter as like part of my instant response when like WannaCry and all these different malware, global malware outbreaks were taking. I had the tweet deck up and was, that was my source of intelligence and, and information um, uh, so to be able to, to, to make accurate decisions on how we move through that. Okay, so like, kind of related to that, if you're ignoring Twitter because you're trying to concentrate on something else and sometimes like big important things happen and you have like no clue it's happening for hours um, and that really sucks if it's like say wanna cry. Um, so automated alerts when there are stereotypical patterns of activity within the hackersphere that are associated with an important type of incident. So for example, it's really obvious when um, a major new malware outbreak uh, is developing because you, you, there are these distinctive quantifiable patterns of interactions between members of the malware analysis, threat intelligence, and DFIR lists that like, it, I can see it happening within about 30 minutes of something starting. Um, mm -hmm. Which, you know, it's important. Having that lead time can be helpful. Yeah. Um, 
And another problem, hackers are constantly discussing and sharing tools, tutorials, write-ups, and, and other resources with each other, yet there is no systematic uh, method for collecting and curating the URLs that are being shared among members of the hackersphere, which is a real shame because, um, like, considering we already have years of public interactions yeah. between established members of the community recommending all manner of resources to each other. Like, we have that, that whole data set, and we're not doing anything with it. Yeah. So it's, it's a good thing that Leetlist Le Le effectively allows us to define the boundaries of our community on Twitter. So it's now possible to take into account only interactions between members of our predefined in-group, run analytics on each URL shared within that defined community, and then have an automatically generated, dynamically updated database of InfoSec-related URLs, mm -hmm. and and that that would like reflect the curation and vetting that is already being done via the interactions in in the hacker sphere, mm -hmm. which is cool. Yeah, I want that. <laughs> um, and and going back to the signal to noise uh, kind of thread that that unites all of those problems is like this fire hose of information problem isn't going away, and in, in fact it's going to just keep getting worse, and who do we want to be in charge of the algorithms that curate our content for us? Like, the content's going to be curated in some way. Do we want it to be our community, or do we want to just let the companies in charge of monetizing our communities whose algorithms exploit our neurochemistry to be in charge of it? I'm pretty sure I know the answer for me, but um, anyway. It's, it's time to start learning how to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and we should be working on this properly problem in earnest before the platforms our communities thrive on force us to figure out the solution on short notice um, and on a compromised platform. And, and while we're at it, let's also incentivize posting useful things. Yep. So, okay, that sounds great, but of course for hackers and, you know, what are we really probably going to use this for? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so yeah, a couple of things we've been playing around with. I know, uh, you know. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So I really want to generate. Where's my shmoo ball? I want to. I want to create Markov bots. So like, we, we could have a Markov bot for each leet le list that has an on-topic tweet corpus, and and we could see how quickly we needed to shut down one of the bots because it was getting too convincing. Like, I guarantee the malware analysis and threat intelligence bots would uh, become a liability really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, or or we could do what um, Evan Soltanik suggested. And, and build a grammar out of that tweet corpus and then calculate um, a generator for that grammar and predict the date at which all possible discussions in that topic will have been exhausted and then have a then have like a bar graph for all of the different domains <laughs> of <laughs> for that uh, yeah. yeah I mean and so that's something else like you know Pandora box mode you know we've been talking about uh, you know, muting or, or, or silencing the noise and, and enhancing the signal, but there's people out there just want to watch the world burn. We know them. Um, and so why not flip, flip, flip that around? Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, you know, maybe you want to mute the signal and, and enhance the noise. And, well, and, 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 and it all, on, so. I mean, okay, sorry, I got to be an yeah. anthropologist right now. Like, yeah. it also serves a very um, important social bonding purpose in our community, it does. It does. And, which is stress relieving because we're mammals. That's right. So, for mental health purposes, we'll have we'll have a shit posting only view. That's right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and then and, and then of course, uh, no good uh, info infosec person would be complete without their own pew 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 map. Um, I know that's been Wax's uh, yeah. driving goal, no, kind of hit in the background like, for this thing here. That's my dream. Yeah. My dream is to just have like a monitor on the wall of my office that that is just a pew pew map of mm -hmm. hacker Twitter, and I can just keep an eye on it yeah. and look at all the interactions between each of the different domains and among members of the same domain and and we, we have to have that we're I, going, we're I, going to do that. I want it I just want to be able to glance at it all day so I'm gonna uh, move really quick here because we're, uh, we're running out of time there's a lot of data um, and a lot of stuff to talk about so well, where we stand right now um, you know project roadmap um, the base infrastructure for being able to handle the data is is you know kind of built out in the background we definitely need to be able to ramp that up and start uh, uh, working with more um, uh, what we're not prepared for was actually the outreach that we've already um, we've already had there's a lot been a lot of volunteer work I'm sure we're gonna have a lot more after this um, so we want to make sure we have something that's going to be uh, an infrastructure to be able to manage that uh, volunteer work. Uh, so that's uh, on our roadmap. Um, integrating uh, the information that we receive from those volunteers and make sure it's properly recorded and implemented uh, so we don't lose anybody's input in there. Um, we need to make sure that happens. We, we want to make sure
make sure this is a project that the community can yeah. own. It's, it's not. Community it's not mine. Too. I don't. I don't want to own it. It's too big. <laughs> it's I can't started. handle it by myself. Like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you can see. Yeah, it's it's a big project. So um, so uh, another challenge we have is, is scraping historical data when we start adding new accounts into that. Um, there's Twitter API rate limits that we come up against all the time. Um, so we need to make sure we get that proper because we're always going to be adding new in there. We need to pull the historical data to, to build that baseline and those signals. Um, and then once we do all of that and we start getting that framework built, then we can start to to really build that uh, repository of all that technical uh, uh, data that we're getting. So. Um, I'll quickly, we'll just we'll run through this real fast here. Okay, so we, we need subject matter experts. I don't care if you object to the word expert. If you, <laughs> if you are familiar with a specific domain of InfoSec, you're better off than I am. Yeah. Um, so, like, it's not feasible for me to keep curating these lists exclusively by myself. This, this talk is like an SOS. Like, there are too many. Um, I could keep doing this for, like, the next five years by myself, or I could hand it off in complete yeah. to the community you and allow y'all to pick it apart yeah. and improve it vastly um, so that this can be a valuable resource as soon as possible. Um, and folks within your subspecialties, you know your peers better than anyone. Like, give, give us feedback so I can improve the accuracy of the leak list map of your part of the community. Yeah, so um, up here real quick. We, we need to be having these discussions about where the boundaries between different subfields lie so that we can better inform outsiders and HR and newbies of like, what we call what we do. Yeah. Um, and, and all of this is completely understandable. Our discipline is kind of in its infancy, but it's about time we try to achieve some sort of working consensus in all the available niches and what we call them. Yeah. So I won't go over everything else. You see some of the skills up there. Um, Links on the bottom. Uh, we're going to have more information come out uh, on those here uh, after the conference um, and some sign-up forms. And, and definitely reach out to us. We'll be outside of this afterwards, and, and we've we got to answer any type of questions that we have. We'd love to talk about this stuff. So. All right. Thank you very much.